everyone, it's Alex, and today I'm here to talk about my favorite read of 2020 so far, and that is Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. This is a story about a girl named Ava who's in her early 20s and moves from Dublin to Hong Kong to teach kids English. And shortly after arriving in Hong Kong, Ava finds herself exploring a love triangle with two other characters, and their names are Edith and Julian. And that isn't a spoiler or anything because it's on like the blurbs and the summaries of this book everywhere. And initially I thought that this love triangle would be just a convenient way of developing characters like Edith and Julian, but I think it was actually a great way to level sort of just how opinionated Ava can be in certain circumstances. And obviously a premise isn't too groundbreaking if it's involving an early 20-something trying to explore their identity alongside romance. But when I really think about it, some of my favorite movies are actually exactly about this. And I think whenever it's done really well, it can really pay off. And for me, I think the payoff is realizing just how much Ava stacks these thoughts of her own sense of significance against her own perceptions of life that seem at times consistently contradictory. Some examples I have here is that Ava is somehow both confident but lacks authority. She's curious but she isn't manipulative and she's self-aware but routinely indulges herself in ignorance. And of course there's Ava's genuine ability to make me feel like she actually cares about Edith and Julian evenly. And altogether I would say that Ava has this civilized obsession with unlearning the contracts of relationships that she's always perceived them as. One big example of this is how Ava is determined to start this relationship with Edith as Julian is out of town but still wants to maintain her relationship with him. Ava says, I couldn't like Edith without liking woman and I also felt illogically but with conviction that I couldn't like woman without liking Edith. To me, I think this signals Ava's beginning inklings of what she considers a relationship to be. For her, that's being able to value her immediate feelings and wondering if it's ever a betrayal of feelings that felt the strongest in the past. And a way for Ava to confirm her thoughts on this is being able to equate public intimacy with her own sense of self-improvement. And her self-improvement is not really defined by how she is with Edith and Julian, but her perception of what it means to be around them in general. At one point, Ava asks Edith why they stopped going to the movies, and Edith admits it's because she thought Ava would find herself more cultured. And another example for Julian is that Ava finds a book of poetry that Julian wrote, and she's worried it's really bad, but more importantly how that would change the illusion of her relationship with Julian based on her idea of him. The problem with this is that Ava believes that self-improvement can only be confined to being expanded upon privately. Even more damaging is how Ava believes that her private emotional pain is what can motivate her even further to figure out what she values in Edith and Julian. So any time that Edith and Julian both try to become more privately intimate with Ava, it really shatters her expectations of them and she doesn't know how to process that. And what's even worse is that Edith and Julian are both very refreshingly straightforward about what they want and they're doing Ava a courtesy. Whenever Julian openly tells Ava that he's not her boyfriend, Ava responds, his honesty hurt my pride, so I told myself he was a liar, and I couldn't even feel truly, sumptuously sorry for myself because it wasn't a reciprocation I was craving. My desire was for Julian's feelings to be stronger than mine. No one would sympathize with that. I wanted a power imbalance, and I wanted it to benefit me. And then we also have an example from Edith. Ava says, she asked if I thought I'd gone for unavailable people because I knew I'd never have to face the reality that being with them would not solve all my problems. I told her she had no business saying something that perceptive. Everyone does that, Ava, she said. You keep describing yourself as this uniquely damaged person when a lot of it is completely normal. I think you want to feel special, which is fair, who doesn't? but you won't allow yourself to feel special in a good way, so you tell yourself you're especially bad. I asked her again to stop reading me so well. Exciting Times, unlike maybe other stories with a similar premise, resists the idea of the thrust of the story being about a protagonist deciding who to love more. Instead, it really tries to crack at figuring out the person making the choices. Eva herself constantly calls herself out at the inconsistency of wanting to be emotionally available to people, which nicely denounces Ava's chances of ever being labeled this 
enigmatic figure just waiting to be misunderstood because she isn't. Instead, I would say that Ava's biggest struggle is her impulse to create these imaginary scenarios that are painted so realistically, emphasized by the first person narration that we're given. And these half experiences that she finds comfort in is always stripped of their full potential for Ava to improve on herself. One recurring scenario are Ava's phone calls back home to her family in Ireland, that way she doesn't have to confront them personally. Another example is Ava teaching her Hong Kong students English and she knows that it's subjective based on her difference between Irish English and traditional English. And the nail in the coffin is probably Ava's use of social media. She starts explaining what I will generously define as research by looking into customizable ways of calculating a level of intimacy that social media can bring us with other people. And Ava also types out these confessional drafts that only enable her false sense of vulnerability. But despite all of these things, I'm sure you can tell by now that I have a lot of opinions about how self-sabotaging but strangely well-intended that Ava is at pursuing her life and I think that's the true success of this book. The dust jacket of exciting times self-proclaims itself as a millennial story. I definitely think millennial is an overused buzzword but I do think that Ava shares what most millennials would feel is a trademark characteristic and that would be this universal tug to not only figure out what fulfills us, but how to feel fulfilled whenever it seems like we're constantly exposed to so many people doing a much better job at it. And that's ultimately how Ava positions herself, not based on how much she cares for Edith or Julian or even her family, but how optimistic she is at helping fulfill a part of their lives, even if it's not their whole lives. And to me, Exciting Times is a great story for simultaneously embracing and challenging what it means whenever we give ourselves the space to figure out who we are. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.